One of the hottest topics today is Greenwich National Park, Greenwich Dunes Estates, and the federal government buying basically the whole balance of what was supposed to turn into a giant resort. At one point it was going to have 515 units, condos, uh, townhouses, hotel, restaurants. This was going to be a big thing. At the end of the day, 30, 40 years later, the land that was supposed to be developed has been sold to the federal government. So today what we're left with is Greenwich Dunes Estates. And from what I understand, you can't get a building permit because you can't access the water system. Because the water system, number one, was sold to the federal government, which doesn't make a lot of sense to me. And number two, it hasn't been used in over 20 years. So whether or not it even works is the question. And the additional question would be, there's no, or not question, statement, but according to Maritime Electric, is there's no electricity feeding the well house, which would feed the water to the subdivision. And there's also no electricity that goes to the actual lots. Allegedly, the infrastructure is there, including fiber op, but whether or not any of that stuff's hooked up to anything, we don't know. In the distance, you can see the uh, multi-million dollar interpretive center. And we'll know when we're in the original national park before they ended up purchasing pretty well everything around us on the right-hand side. When the telephone poles change from these typical wooden telephone poles to the stain or not stainless steel, but like a um, galvanized steel. So you get two wooden ones, galvanized. So this is basically where the park used to start before they purchased the land. Just up here, we're going to be turning right. This is where phase two would have been. When you develop land, you have to do it in phases, and then typically when you sell off half the lots, they'll give you another phase. So to my right would be where the second phase would be. Those were never developed or turned into anything. So we're going to turn right here and on our left is the interpretation center this is quite the spot there's a few archaeological digs all kinds of stuff going on in the area it's very neat you've got the mobile sand dunes apparently there's only three sets of those in in uh, North America I'm just going to do a loop here I got stuck in this parking lot once with a brand new truck when I told the driver, do not take the truck on the snow, and he did it anyway, and we are here for three hours. That's the Interpretation Center. Lots of neat stuff in there, movie you can watch, or movies you can watch. The beach access is at the end of this road, so you'd have to pay to get into the National Park. Sometimes you're going to find this gate locked, and it shouldn't be because it's denying access to the lot owners. So on the right would be Greenwich Dunes Estates. And uh, right, 60. And just coming up would be Phase 1, which was all initially sold off mostly to people in the states, New York under the premise that all this stuff was going to be built. And it, it never got built, because in my opinion they didn't have the money to build it. They were trying to sell the project off to somebody else, but to try to have a hotel and a golf course sustain itself financially in two months worth of business in the summer is not really going to happen. Wow, this is really growing up. Either I'm going blind or I just drove by an entranceway. This road would typically be smoother. However, we've had some heavy rain. I don't think I've ever seen this grass so long. So up front there, you got some boardwalks. This is a gorgeous, gorgeous spot to hang out on. And uh, you've got showers up here, beautiful white sandy beach, of course the sand dunes, ponds, it's all here. The only thing we can't seem to find are the roadways. This is 
very bizarre. This might be it here. Wow. This doesn't look like it's been used in a very long time. This used to be a really nice gravel road. And the other entrance I couldn't even find. But this is kind of sad. I'm just going by memory here because you can't see the road. Wow. Obviously, if you own lots in here, you may want to get a bush cutter. Like these bushes are five feet, five, four, five feet high on my left. So the federal government didn't purchase the lots and according to the federal government they are in talks with the province to discuss the what they referred to as a couple of days ago when I was talking to Parks Canada the million dollar water system. The original advantage of this subdivision is it was all underground services. You can see a telephone utility box on my left and then you see what would have been a transformer so that would have cost a lot of money to put in but uh, it just never took off and it didn't take off in my opinion because nobody built anything the initial plan was that a local developer was going to build three houses and never did and uh, nothing ever happened so this is the subject of all the controversy is this little house on the left uh, used to be able to drive there it looks like the road has grown in so there's no electric meter hooked up to it I'm just gonna somehow try to turn around. So I don't think this goes anywhere. I think this ended up as a court. So this would have been the feeder street for phase two. But as you can see, there's not much here. This is really sad to see what's happened with this location. I mean, it's it was a lot of people's dream come true to have a building lot in the middle of the National Park. That Canadian flag in the distance is the entrance to the parking lot. And you can see the showers and all that sort of stuff there. And there is a tower you can climb up, and then in the far distance you can see the tip of a sand dune. This would be looking at the lots that are closest to the water. As you can see, the road is just really bad. And once the road gets to this point, you're pretty well putting the top coat of gravel down. There's another telephone box there. And then, of course, the controversial well pup house. You do have a transformer here, which is interesting, considering there's not supposed to be any electricity down here, unless they just put the transformers in for something to do until they uh, hook the subdivision up. It's quite a walk to get in here. I mean, this, these are three feet high. So we got no power meter. And we got a, a locked door. I'm assuming that transformer was used to get the high voltage down for this well pump. So it looks like there might be some information or misinformation as to whether this is fed with electricity. Can you hear that? This transformer is live. 
there is power going to it, probably. And this would have been for the central services. Very interesting. Back to our tour. I'm going to venture out to, uh, I believe it's called Dirk's Court, which is the closest piece of property that is close to what was formerly called the Austin Farm, which was then purchased by the owners, previous owners of this subdivision, and then recently sold to the federal government abandoning all the uh, current property owners. So we have another pad with no transformer. So that transformer is sitting there probably using up electricity for 20 years doing nothing. Geez, if I had a, a lawnmower attachment for the truck, it would have been just a perfect day to drive around in here. I see a for sale sign in the distance. I think there's another one behind it that's currently listed for sale. I don't even remember these trees. Those trees look like they're 10 years old. There's a remnant of one of my old signs. It's probably been there for 15 years. It doesn't look like we're gonna get, well, let me see here. I think what's going to happen here is all this stuff is just going to grow, grow in and the subdivision will just return back to its native form. So if you're a property owner in here, you may want to bush cut this all down. I think the road's dead. It's not going to be revived. You could spray it, but it's it's too late. So on the left is the showers. That's how close you are to the park. And these lots here on the side of the showers, these are the ones that were supposed to be initially built on according to the one of the prior owners. And that never happened. If that had happened, I don't know if you've seen the butterfly effect movie, but it would have changed everything for the subdivision. The psychology of people pertaining to the development of subdivisions is no one wants to be the first one to build. So typically it is the developer's responsibility or it should be their plan to build something. Because if they don't, this is what you're going to end up with. A bunch of empty nothing. Now I know there's four lots that transacted here. That's why you see what look, looks like the remnants of another for sale sign. And when you look at the trees, you can tell you're going to get some pretty high winds here. It's always a good way to tell what the winds are like, is just look at the angle of the trees. These aren't too bad, but the ones closer to the water are like 10 to 15 degrees off center. So there's another telephone box here. More exposed, exposed piping to our left. It stays like this, I wish I had a lift kit on the truck. But you usually don't see subdivisions in this state of disrepair. So 
So right over there to my left is the, is the beach. And you either have to go through the National Park, which you probably have to pay for, or there's a way you can walk from the end of this court. But I wouldn't do it because the mosquitoes will eat you alive. So in front of us, past that fir or pine tree or whatever it is, just sort of off center to the right, that would have been the Yorston farm. And then they also put some sort of pseudo waterfront lots on our left here. And at the other end towards the road, there is a bunch of lots developed with St. Peter's Bay views. So this would have been a cul-de-sac. Last time I was out here, there was nothing but gravel. We just assume, you know, I'm going by memory here. But through here, I believe this is lot nine. This is the feeder to the waterfront and the right of way down to the beach. But you're not getting down there. And that's basically it in a nutshell. For Greenwich Dunes Estates, my advice is form a HOA and get this cleaned up and establish uh, what's going to happen with the water system. Because as we can see, there's probably electricity at that transformer. You just need someone to, uh, to test the well, which may or may not work. I could never seem to get a definitive answer on that. So thanks for watching my grand tour of... Greenwich Dunes Estates. Be sure to subscribe to the channel. Do all that YouTube stuff. Thumbs up, comments. If you have any questions about Prince Edward Island or PEI in general, put them in the comments below. And have yourself a great day. I think my battery is going to die in one of the cameras. See ya.